Hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 709, that's 709 of the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and I hope you're feeling good, I hope you're feeling fine, wherever this lovely little podcast may find you, I hope you are doing swimmingly and I'm doing fine, thank you for flipping asking. I just finished watching United beat Crystal Palace free now at home at the Carling Cup. I'm not going to break down the entirety of the match. I'm probably going to say that for the next podcast because I want to rewatch it completely because I only ended up watching the first, no, the second half, sorry, because I had some other things to do. But it was pretty entertaining or was pretty nice to see us actually playing some pretty nice football for a change. Players do make a difference. Obviously, Amrabat coming into the team and playing as like a weird inverted fullback in midfield and stuff was great. But what happened, what was on display, I feel like was a clear indication of just how important it is to have different combinations in your team and to also be okay with trying other people just to see how things go. Because no one can deny that Crystal Palace, against Crystal Palace at home, we played far better. We had more control of the ball. We were able to attack and defend as a team. We just looked more fluid than without Bruno Fernandes and Marcus Rashford. And I think that happens quite often in teams. Sometimes, depending on the style of football you want to play, regardless if a player has got a really high output, I think I remember it being similar to like a Ibrahimovic thing, right? Ibrahimovic at Barcelona under Pep. Although Ibrahimovic was still at his kind of top of his powers and clearly somebody who could influence game and really was somebody that could affect games in big ways, had big moments, he didn't match the style of football that Pep wanted to play at the time. So he left him out. And after a while, they kind of fell out and then he stopped playing for the team altogether. That happens quite often, more often than people would like to flip and imagine. But for some reason at United, we have this weird thing where we are incapable of dropping the players who are quote unquote the best players in order to benefit the team overall. We don't want to do that. We'd rather play the best players because they have more moments, because they have better stats, they have better goals, they have better assists and whatever it may be. But they don't really help the entirety of the team. They don't help us to play good football. And they also don't get us closer to our goal, which is closing the gap with the bigger teams. And I think that's a really a bit of an analogy for life in general. Sometimes the thing that you think is going to get you where you want to get you doesn't. And the thing that you never thought of does. And what you should do is just double down on it. That's what you should do. Life should be a, a never ending experiment of just trying out things until you find something that works and then doubling down on it but not always sticking to the thing that you were doing before thinking that it's going to change because as, as that great Einstein quote says along the lines of you know um you know expecting the same things from doing the same things is fucking a form of insanity however that fucking quote goes I probably butchered it but you know what I mean but for some reason, certain sports teams, it doesn't happen. So I'll give you a full breakdown of another podcast, what happened there. But I thought I'd just touch upon that. In terms of music and what I've been listening to, I thought I would just give you a bit of a heads up and let you know if you're a fan of um, the type of stuff I talk about when it comes to club culture and stuff and dance music, and you want to have a recommendation of things to listen to, I advise you, I implore you to please check out Helena House's Fabric Mix um, that's available now on all your DSPs, right? Helena House is maybe one of my favorite female DJs on the scene at the moment. Maybe DJs full stop overall. She's incredible. She doesn't get as much of the hype as all the other girls probably get because she's not as social media friendly as the others. She allegedly doesn't have her own account, but I'm not too sure if I believe it. There is a pretty big Helena Half Instagram account out there, a fan account that allegedly she doesn't run. And the story behind her is that she just kind of is a bit analog. She doesn't really like to use the internet. She doesn't really have a smartphone. She doesn't have a social media and just plays amazing sets around the world, mostly vinyl and just fucking kills it, right? And she's obviously one of the best fucking behind the booth DJ dancers out there. She's up there with fucking Patrick Mason in terms of, you know, her vibe behind the booth making you want to skank she's up there with octa octa the same thing um there's a few others i can't think of who've got an amazing vibe behind the booth and it just makes you want to get fucking get with it and really go on it right so um 
check out head in the house fabric mix it's available now there's actually a party happening this friday no this saturday sorry um the september the 30th at fabric which is head in the house um in this room with the same people as Re radioactive man imogen and night fleet and in room two is bambuno who's obviously big on instagram one of the biggest djs in the world according to him on instagram but he's got a really good instagram presence so big up him um a person called italics and freakenstein but obviously, you know, Helena Health, Imogen and Radioactive Man are definitely the people to check out in fucking room one. But Helena Health legitimately is amazing. Um, if you're, again, if you're a fan of the stuff I listen to and you want a recommendation on dance music to check out, please check out this Fabric Mix. Essentially, it's an album of her mixing, but they've laid it out in the Fabric Mix. If you know anything about Fabric Mixes, um, it's, it's great to play on your commute, great to play in the gym in the background, and it'll definitely give you a feel of what she's about as a DJ. It's absolutely fantastic, legit. It's one of the best um fabric mixes i've listened to in a very fucking long time so big up head in the health so much so it's making me doubt whether i should go to see her in the health player fabric or whether i should try and go to fucking honey i'm um, sorry phonox to see honey play all night long honey's going to be mostly disco in the house obviously if you're familiar with honey you'd know that but it's completely sold out as you can tell you know honey's a very popular dj over here in london um that kind of easy to digest you know house and dance music whatever that we like however you call it indie dance i tell a disco whatever the kind of genre he plays and just his infectious vibe behind the booth he's also somebody that i feel like does a good job of really engaging with his audience behind the booth has a really good social media presence did a lot of stuff during the pandemic in terms of engaging his fan base in getting them involved in music and sharing their thoughts and opinions on the scene and shit so it's no surprise that he's kind of blown up even more so than he was before but i've always rated honey he's one of the bigger djs similar to gerd jansen um similar to young marco and a few other these guys who are really at the top of their game super popular but also can appeal to quote-unquote underground chin stroker head types like myself so honey at fucking phonics happening which is 9 30 to 4 a.m that's the only problem right it's a bit of a shit time by the time i leave my house it'll be 12 or maybe it'll be one so i'll get i only have like three hours of raving or should i be going to fucking fabric and hearing hen and a half play basically all night long probably gonna be the last one to play i'm assuming she'll probably start around two or three but you still got an incredible lineup of people to check out the entirety of the time so i have to kind of figure it out because i can't do both um one location is in the depths of fucking brixton and the other one is in the depths of fucking you know cent east central west london east central london whatever that may be so it's a bit of a distance to get to two places maybe if i take my fixed ski my little fixie bike with me that might help but you know having to cycle from brixton to you know what is it marleyburn what area is it again i forgot the station where it's next to anyway fabric but cycling all the way to bloody you know kind of old street area from brixton a bit tipsy and maybe a bit higher maybe not be the best option but it could be fun and it could be a fun story to tell on the pod so i might have to do that so keep that in mind bear that in mind if you're if you're familiar um check out hell in the health available now and all your dsps really amazing mix i'm about halfway through it but i really do recommend it if you haven't checked it out please do if you haven't checked it out please do next we've got this really interesting update which to me doesn't really make much sense but maybe because i don't use the app i don't really know what's going on but this is an interesting little development happening that i kind of saw on the interweb so it's following tinder snobs can now pay 4.99 dollars per month to be matched with the most sought after personalities so tinder has rolled out a promised high-end membership a pricey 400 dollars basically 500 dollars per month subscription dubbed tinder select which includes unique perks like the ability to be seen by more users including tinder's most sought after profiles the ability to direct message others matching others without matching and other vip exclusive features this feature feels like an ability to monetize creeping it probably already happens i'm sure there's a contingency of incredibly thirsty men because you know men can be thirsty myself included i'm sure there's meant to be an incredibly big group of thirsty guys out there who probably will match somebody on tinder it doesn't work out but then they'll get their name and maybe sometimes you know some people i'm sure link their fucking social media profiles on those things which is fucking insane and then they'll try and fucking dig deep and find out about them personally i'm sure that does happen so they're just trying to find a way to profit from it essentially but that's an insane thing to do to allow people to you know message people without being matched the whole point why these fucking dating apps worked i thought the whole reason behind it was that 
obviously you have this ability to kind of you know it's kind of surface level shallowness which we all are guilty of but then it also allows you to kind of gauge who's interested in you because if they match then you can fucking start talking but that's still not a guarantee that it's going to go anywhere but i'm sure some people you match and you just the conversation just stays on the fucking app and doesn't really go anywhere it doesn't really go into irl stuff it just is what it is and sometimes along the way they're like you know what fuck you and they unmatch you but trying to then allow people to message people they don't match who they wanted to match is fucking crazy personally for me that is insane but hey maybe there's a rationale behind it let's continue with the article the news was first reported by bloomberg and follows a parent company match groups earlier confirmation that tinder would expand its membership options to include a new high-end product catered to gen z users sometime this fall so it's going to be a new product for gen z users but i wonder what the tinder select is i wonder if this is why that their way of kind of trying to get on top of raya because i think raya had a bit of a slowdown i heard on for certain articles but i'd imagine nowadays because of the prevalence and the abundance of fucking dating apps out there maybe there is a portion of people out there who would prefer to have a more select group of people to select from and pay for that privilege that's what probably Riot does even though it's a celebrity kind of thing it's more so for like high profile people who don't want to be bait and seen on fucking tinder and shit and i'm sure they have some privacy and safeguards in place to prevent people from screenshotting people's profiles and sharing this sharing that whatever it may be and obviously it's probably like you know if you share something and it gets linked back to you you probably get banned for life i'd assume but maybe this is their way of kind of matching that because it must be you know maybe there's that there's make there's probably an abundance of fucking dating apps out there i don't use any of them so i don't really know but i'd imagine there's probably loads of those out there and maybe nowadays even regular people regular schmegular civilians who aren't famous like you know what i i spend a lot of time on this app anyway i get a lot out of it um it kind of allows me to sort of like fast track my dating or fucking hookups and shit without you know going on needless dates and shit you can eventually you can essentially just gauge the interest straight away on an app there's a bit of disconnect there as well because it's an app and it's not face to face so you can probably throw a few a few more risque um you know um hell mary shots and see what one so you pay for that privilege because it is saving you time and money if you think about it going out trying to approach people in real life bloody blah, blah 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 and doing that whole back and forth it kind of does speed up the process for you a little bit so you can find out yes or no where you can go with this kind of relationship you would imagine you would imagine let's continue it says the features alone necessarily aren't necessarily sorry what sales tend to select instead it's an exclusivity tinder says that less than one percent of users will be allowed to gain access to the premium product and members can choose to display their status with the exclusive select badge on their profile hold on so they're gonna have a so you you can't just pay for it you're gonna have to go through some sort of application process interesting so it is basically their version of raya um inspiration for this members only twit tinder comes from march's um 2022 acquisition of another high-end dating app the league which costs users up to one thousand dollars per week. Yo, how much? Why do people really? This maybe explains a lot about the content online that I hate, which is all that dating, relationship, sex life content, right? Um, who should pay for the date first? Or have you ever slept with somebody on a period? Would you propose to a man? How much does he have to earn? clearly i'm in a minority because the majority of people out there love that content hence why platforms like you know fresh and fin others they do crazy amounts of views those panels they do gets crazy amounts of views even i forgot those guys i think it's sidemen or somebody else they do a kind of like a weird dating tour type of thing that people love i've never watched a single one of those episodes it's not for me but clearly i'm in the minority because the majority of people love it so much that they are willing to pay one thousand dollars per week to be able to use an app a high-end dating app so that must mean people really care about their dating lives they care a lot about their sex lives in the point that they're willing to spend that kind of much that kind of level of money or they want access to the most high caliber of people out there which is odd because just because you have access to them doesn't mean you're going to get them right or you're going to have a chance with them it's, it's an odd thing right to like assume that you're going to do that to or maybe you just want to be in the presence of it i don't really know it's a strange thing there's no guarantee that they're going to like you right you're just throwing you're kind of throwing a lot of money down a drain kind of especially if you're not at that level yet but anyway we continue during its q2 2023 earnings um tinder cpo mark van rich um said the league indicated that there was a market for daters who were willing to pay for quality matches and experiences but tinder select doesn't rely on human and matchmakers nor does it offer anything that's really worth the 500 per month membership beyond exclusivity the feature is set is pre is fairly paltry 
Select members can direct message another member without matching, but only up to two times per week. Okay, that kind of limits the creeping and the fucking annoyance and the pestering to two times per week, which is crazy to even offer it. But whatever, they can't send a super like at the same time. Plus, some recipients, uh, so plus some recipients can opt out receiving DMs. The company's website notes. In addition, select members' profiles will be shown unblurred in the Like You grid in the app for up to seven days, even if they don't pay for Tinder Gold or Platinum subscriptions. That's a lot, bro. That's not really that's not really worth the money, innit? You don't really get much from that. But I guess again, it kind of puts you up in the algorithm. And again, that that, that goes to show that all these apps control how your things are seen so this extends to everything so whenever they put in so if you're a content creator out there i think it's probably imperative for you to pay for whatever pay service that these apps offer you whether it's fucking youtube probably premium i probably might benefit from paying for it whether it's fucking instagram there's a verified option you could also pay for whether it's twitter or x as now it's called you can pay for a verified thing on there and by you know all of them i think they basically promise you if you pay then you have the ability to sort of like have your things that you post on there seen by more people. I think it's very, it's almost imperative to do that nowadays um, because clearly these apps, they control how things are displayed. I know this because I worked at fucking Depop and when I was at Depop, like we could pop things on the grid, on the like discovery page. And really it was to one person's discretion as to what went on the discovery page. People be messaging all the time. Oh, how do I get my stuff on there? How do I get my stuff on there? And, you know, there'll be some long-winded explanation about it, but essentially it was down to a couple of people in the community management team. And then I think when another person got hired, she kind of absorbed it into her role and kind of took ownership of it. But we had basically the button that could essentially have your things listed on the fucking discovery page. So it was never like, oh, because certain things are liked or because this person has better pictures. No, it was like, are you in favor with this person that has the button, that has, that has the finger on their button? Yes. If so, your stuff gets popped. Other people doesn't get popped. Simple as that, really. It continues. However, select members, I promise to be shown Tinder's most sought after profiles so they can enjoy more quality matches. The company doesn't um, detail how this technology works or how it rates this so called exceptional connections, but one might imagine that they include select members or those users most liked or those users um that i like the most. Okay, cool. So that's how it's gonna bump you up. So you're gonna get matched a lot more to select members who wanna pay. So you're gonna have to hope people are gonna willing to pay and you're going to hope that the ones that get liked the most also like you, <laughs> which is a real gamble to take for $500 per month. In addition, Tinder Select users will go to test new Tinder features to advance the users and will be able to hide ads and see likes that they sent over the last seven days. The subscription can be stacked with plus or gold platinum subscription to access more features, the company says. Of course, they're going to let you stack it. They're not going to give you all in one. They're going to basically allow you to buy Tinder Select and also buy plus gold or platinum on top. Of course, they'll do that because there's more money in their bank. But just thinking myself now, right? It is a bit strange because this is also assuming that things are just easier once you get the Tinder Select. Like you're paying for that kind of membership. That doesn't guarantee you're going to get anything from it, right? You're not going to get, it doesn't guarantee you're going to, you're going to smash. It doesn't guarantee you're going to meet them. It doesn't matter to guarantee you're even going to get a fucking hug right so you're spending quite a bit of money and you probably still have to spend more money to find out if there is anything for you down that path with that person it's an interesting way to go about things right but i'd assume nowadays if you're on those apps and you pay for the free version or sorry oh you just have the free version it's probably not even worth it they probably limit the amount of times you can use it in a day the amount of dms you can send they basically put you in a corner where you only have an option to pay that's how fucked up those apps are. Uh, <laughs> to apply for Tinder Select, users must have at least four photos, five interests, uh, bio with a minimum of 15 characters, show relationship intent, be photo verified, uh, or importantly, have way too much money to spend on dating apps. Exactly. If approved, they receive an in-app message to alert them as well as an email with a unique unlock code. Through Tinder Select, it, though Tinder Select isn't expected to attract but a small number of subscribers, a feature price that could boost Tinder's bottom line at a time that Tinder has seen a decline in paying users, which dropped to four percent year over to what? Which dropped four percent year over year to ten point five million as conversions decre decreased. The company reported in August. Of course, I would think that, especially now when everybody's outside. I'd imagine Tinder Select and all those things probably were booming during the lockdown. People were lonely; they were at home. They wanted just some bit of company or whatever it may be. So they were just buying those things just to kind of keep chatting to people and obviously arrange hookups on the sly. But once people stepped outside, 
Tinder kind of, you know, the, the, the use for pay Tinder is a bit down because I remember being in, in clubs and bars and stuff and seeing guys using Tinder in the clubs where they'll go out and they'll purposely turn it on when they're in the radius of a cool bar. And if there's some cute girls there, they'll might like or whatever. And then it's an easy chance to kind of get to people in real life. Um, but it doesn't mean you'll use, it doesn't mean you need to get the paid version to do that feature. You can easily use the free version. So it's an interesting approach. Um, interested to see how far this goes and if people actually like it. But $500 is a lot, bro. You have to really fucking be into dating. But like I said, I'm probably in the minority because there's plenty of people out there who love to date, who love to hang out, who love to just chin wag, who love to talk about fucking dating because I'm sure that happens a lot with people that go on Tinder and shit. It just ends up being a conversation about a conversation you already had online. So that probably happens. So maybe $500 is worth it because you save a bunch of money because you probably would never meet these people in real life. And if you did have to meet them, you have to invest in a lot of money to meet them. Maybe you have to go to fucking festivals, go to clubs and stuff, go outside, god forbid so if you have the ability to find all these people on your app alone via your smartphone it probably makes a lot of sense so good luck with you guys out there if you are going to use tinder select you can find it wherever tinder is located you know where to find it you don't need me to send you there find it use it enjoy it and obviously wear protection that's all i say to you guys out there make sure you wear protection okay moving on from that one i want to talk about doja cat's album scarlet we need to talk about this because it's pretty clear to me that after listening to this album that she clearly is a level above a lot of the girls within her kind of class of artists, right? Whether you think of um, a Coyle Ray, a Lato, um, Flo Millie, whoever they may be, Megan Thee Stallion, all these girls who are kind of in her sort of like grouping, in her sort of class, she's definitely a level above in terms of artistry. You can tell from the way that she puts songs together, from her lyrical ability, melodies and stuff, beat selection, sequencing, um, artistic direction, all this stuff is really good, right? You can definitely tell it. But one thing that I was saying during the whole kerfuffle around her basically, you know, chastising her fan base and basically telling them that she doesn't really fuck with them like that. They need to relax. She's just a star. Adore me from afar, but don't try and be my friend. I don't like you. Get fucked. Leave me alone. That whole thing. I was saying at the time, the only way this works is if your music bangs. You can't be a cunt and have that kind of personality. I think the only way we've seen it work so far has been Kanye version, right? Kanye has shown us that even if you are a really unlikable character or you turn into a very unlikable person or you have very, um, you know, grating and annoying personality traits, you say things people don't like, you generally go out of your way to annoy people, blah, 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 blah. Most people will forgive that if you are incredible at what you do artistically if you're a genius level creative, if you just nine times out of 10 hit it out of the park and clearly Ye does. If you've listened to the the leaks that have come out, the Jesus King um, produced by Dr. Dre, Jesus King 2, um, some of the leaks of random singles that has put out, the scrap verses for fucking, um, each, what you call it, uh, Life at the Party and all that malarkey, you will clearly notice that, okay, you will definitely step away from those leaks thinking, I get why Ye has a lot of sycophants. I get why Ye has a lot of bum lickers. I get why Ye has a lot of fans who just can't let go of him because there's near one, nobody out there who makes music of that level nowadays. No one. And I think the problem with Doja is that this album just isn't good enough to justify all the antics. It just isn't, unfortunately. It's good enough to be better than all the girls in her grouping, but I've, I also don't think there's much competition and it's not, you know, that stacked of a field. Like you look at someone like a Coyle Ray, right? She hasn't made a good single in years, even though she has the talent to do so. Just for some reason, we get all these horrible 90s remakes things. The only one I think that's been semi-decent has been the one with Busta Rhymes. That was fairly decent single. The rest of them have been pretty terrible. Um, she's kind of fly to deceive. I think Lato also is somebody that you probably couldn't listen to for more than an hour um megan the stallion i've never really rated too much um and it's always been a bit of an issue so she hasn't really got much competition because this, the, the competition field isn't that great so you can't really use that as much of a win but i just think all the antics all the fucking weird symbolism thing that she was doing to launch the project and the devil worship and all this sort of stuff you know do what you gotta do to kind of get your traction i just think all of that stuff is just null and void if when the album drops it's just a bit like meh 
And after listening to this album, especially like six records in, I quickly got a bit tired and a bit bored of that voice inflection, the kind of thing that she does with her voice, right? Which is kind of similar to Nikki, but it just feels a little bit more overdone. It feels a little bit more tired. It feels a little bit more um, uninspired and all over the place on this particular album, especially because when she put this album together before it launched or before it dropped, there was this understanding that she was trying to do a rap album. I think even if you look at the category, let me see if I saw this. Yeah, it's actually listed on the rap, actually. It's listed on the rap category on Apple Music. So clearly she's trying to convince people or to remind people that she can rap, which I think she can. Similar to like a Beyonce, I think people underrate her rapping because melodically singing why she's really good but her rapping ability is amazing i still remember that old fucking freestyle of her sitting in a car somewhere wearing a fucking horrible wig just rapping in a passenger seat with some guy like it's amazing like your highness why you always buying that fly shit why you gotta check them tyrants and why you shut it down like hydrants four door or five six see what we get with our mindset know what's priceless when there's nice lenses on my irises need a high check for that white jet to my island why she gotta swag like a light bitch why she gotta brag like a tight bitch why she gotta act like a white bitch because i don't respond to your hype shit i think that you niggas might like this like is the world for me do you ever feel like that like life is surreal but you gotta keep it real like that sometimes you gotta split real fast turn down these niggas at the heels go clack clack click clack he ain't had to ask this bad only if you bad then you more like cat we just stack we don't fold our cash doji you ain't a british bitch shit i just like british kids do you mind if i twist my hips and dutty wine on your bitch's lips i'm cuntified and i kill this shit i'm done let the dj spin this hit tell she was hungry to fucking make it i love when you see those videos of people when they're you know at their be you know at the beginning stages hungry to make it thinking all these opportunities are maybe the one that kind of makes you blow and you look back at it in context you're like oh shit this, this is where you kind of came from so the album's decent enough but it just for me isn't what i would expect to come from somebody who's making all those antics you just got to come with good enough music and for me it just kind of flies to deceive it's kind of all over the place there's a mix of rap there's a mix of pop um, maybe it's a bit fusiony that's probably she was trying to go for but i'm not gonna lie i would have much preferred if she just came out with like a fucking boom bap 10 track i'm gonna wrap your face off album then do this whole kind of mix she could have easily done a boom bap album for scarlet and make it rappy rap rapidly rap 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 and try to make her best fucking j cole impression or try to fucking spit like west side gun and all these type of guys right do your thing and then when the deluxe comes out put all the fucking pop hits on there that could have easily been a thing to do because i feel like this mashup it just doesn't work too well um one of the things i always still laugh at still to this day for me is paint the tongue red that music video fucking makes me laugh so much because in the music video You've got her walking down the street, Doja Cat, right? And for me, it's like you can see a bit of the corny, lame, white side of her come out because she's walking down the street and she's trying to put on her best bad man walk. But it just comes across really cringe and forced. Like she's never really done that in real life. And it just, it's funny when I just see a little bit of it, her walking down the street trying to do that thing. But the track itself is really good. Um, it's a really good way to open up the fucking album. I think it flows really well with Demons, flows really well with Wet Vagina, flows really well with the Fuck the Girls. Um, and it kind of, you know, from then on, it kind of falls off a little bit. And then it picks up again once it gets to 97, Gun, Go Off. And then it's one of my favorite tracks, obviously being Agora Hills, Often. And then actually, um attention is one of my favorite tracks i'm not gonna lie i fucking love attention attention is definitely one that i definitely fucking love but again like i said i just don't think it's worthy of all the drama and the theatrics especially some of the stuff that we've seen in london for some reason she got loads of dancers to come down to brick lane here in london which is essentially home of all the hipsters and the trendy people and also half of the street is dominated by some of the best indian pakistani restaurants in fucking england which is fucking incredible so that whole entire strip is full of those restaurants you can go to and have a great time there but for some reason she had all her dancers um you know covered in red like she's obviously been doing some of her marketing stuff and some of her videos and some of her singles um you know running down the street you know dancing and doing this weird sort of like performance art stuff and it's just not good it doesn't make any sense like why are you doing that in london i don't get what the connection between doja cat london and that track it's a bit odd um maybe it's just because we just an easier market to do those kind of activations at because i think didn't um 
Ice Spice and um, what you call it? And what's her name? And Pink Pantress do the same thing, right? They did have that, that little kind of installation somewhere in London too for their single. So maybe that's a thing, but I never understood that. That was a bit strange. And yeah, overall, just a bit underwhelming. And it kind of has been shown in some of the sales because I don't know if it's because she personally doesn't get many first week sales and she's probably just a stronger singles artist and maybe tours better and sells a lot more tickets and shit. But these first week sales being 60K, and again, I'm not really a care of first week sales doesn't really matter i'm all about the music but again for all the antics for all the nonsense for all the drama for all the beef that she's been causing with her own fan base fans pages all over the place you know deleting their pages and shit um to only sell 60k first week is a bit of an l like let's be real it's a bit of an l and um it kind of goes to show that you can be as much of a cunt as you want but you just need to have good music, good um, work to back it up with. It's similar to like drugs, isn't it, really? If a dealer's a piece of shit and makes you wait fucking hours and hours to get your gear, but the gear's always good, you're going to want to, you're going to put up with him. But if the dealer's a piece of shit and their gear isn't good, you're going to ditch them very quickly and move on to the next person. So I think Doja needs to kind of be aware of that and just relax a little bit. Relax a little bit and figure out a way to kind of navigate that fan base better than what she's doing now i can understand it can be annoying because i'm again i'm not super plugged into the doja verse so i'm sure there's things going on day to day in her life that just you know it's just annoying to deal with because you know in the album there's loads of like little kind of quips at men who want to fuck her that don't get to fuck her it's a it's, it's weird anyway i don't know who she's talking to maybe there's the whole fan base of guys out there who just follow her around and think they've got a chance of her. i'm not really sure what's going on there but regardless, um, she needs to chill because there's one line in fucking, what was it, Agora Hills that doesn't make any sense to me. It was really strange, this line in Agora Hills, right? Um, where is it? It's somewhere here. This one. Um, I'm a mean kitty. Don't get stabbed with a rat tooth. Boys be mad that I don't fuck incels. Girl hate too. gun to their pigtail. This is a strange line to put into your raps because if anything don't you fuck incels don't you even hang around with them because that whole meme of her being in fucking chat rooms with her feet up talking to fucking january sixes and shit don't they all look like incels and wouldn't you say her especially the boyfriend that all the fans hate right the one that's allegedly some sort of abuse i've not again i've not really read too much into it but a lot of her fans don't like that she's dating this one guy um some white dude who looks a bit like an incel and again to be not to be mean to the guy but essentially incel nowadays is basically uh it's basically safe online code word for calling somebody ugly or calling somebody undesirable but you don't want to be too mean so you say incel um but essentially that guy that she's currently involved with who kind of you know is the reason why a lot of the fans don't like her more so than the fucking her saying she doesn't want to talk to her fans she thinks her fans are lame that guy looks a lot like an incel so saying that boys be mad that you don't fuck incels is odd because if anything maybe you could say she's kind of been her worst enemy in this thing right because maybe there is a group of fans out there because i think it might have started if i'm if i'm if i'm being correct here again i don't know much of my, my doja cat law but if i'm being somewhere in somewhere correct in this wasn't there an occasion back in the day when doja was like oh if i reach a certain amount of likes or sales i'm going to show you my boobs she did it and then she didn't show anyone her boobs and then everyone and some people got mad because obviously there's there's a weird group of people men especially on the social media who have this weird <laughs> sort of like possessive ownership thing over some women who they don't wouldn't never have a chance to even speak to in real life which is odd regardless some portion of her fan base got annoyed that she did that a little bit of a troll worked to her advantage um that might have kind of led to the whole beef but also i think to myself you shouldn't be annoyed it's hard to be annoyed and frustrated at the people that you attract when some of the guys that you date look like the guys that are trying to troll you or think they have a chance of you online if that makes sense right she's upset that she has a fan base of frustrated incels who think they can fuck but then she also dates guys who look like incels it's a very odd thing to kind of grow up on and again for me this line is just a runaway throwaway line it just sounds fun but I think it is kind of indicative of how all over the place this album is, right? It doesn't really, it's trying to say everything at once without saying anything. It's trying to do everything at once without doing really much of anything. But the only thing it does do is it does remind you that she is clearly head and shoulders above everybody else because I think she did this with her eyes closed. I'm going to say 
she probably didn't try too hard with this she probably did this with her hands tied behind her back and i feel like that's scary for all the girls out there because it clearly shows this girl's got vision you look at the music videos the live performances how she just you know is able to trigger people online so easily i think she's definitely a problem for a lot of these girls coming up and for me is probably a bit more of an artist than a lot of these other girls coming up she's clearly in it for the fame obviously but it's still in it for the artistry so there's probably more to come from her um again i would have preferred just a straight rap album if you're going to do that um all this other pop mix in it it's just not working for me personally um and again it's just you know wasn't the greatest and didn't really live up to all the antics to be honest and i think the sales kind of reflect that i'll be good to see what happens with the live shows if all the fans that were talking shit about not wanting to be a fans anymore actually follow through um but i would like to see her chill out more um get down to just making good music again fuck trying to be unlikable who cares about being likable but just make good music you know what i mean because if you're a cunt but your music shit it's hard to really go to bat for you but again what do i know what do i know moving on from that one we got this article courtesy of ra um which is fucking crazy because the headline is fucking wild look at this fucking headline false promises lies excuses uk drum and bass artist comics um accused of defrauding production students imagine what kind of piece of shit guy you have to be to fraud students looking to make it in the fucking dance music scene right out of money and shit or whatever he's defrauded them with imagine how much of a piece of shit you have to be to defraud eager vulnerable um you know naive probably to some respect students who just want to have some help and direction and guidance in order to make it in an industry that isn't really you know doesn't really tell you how to make it in an easy way you kind of have to dig and find out yourself imagine taking advantage of those type of people you have to be a real piece of shit so it says here george levings allegedly owes thousands of pounds in unfulfilled lessons to people who enrolled in his bare music workshop absolutely horrible right but anyway this guy looks like somebody that was still a fork at your house anyway and so probably should have probably should have kept those guys and girls in the class probably should have been aware so let's see um, revered drum and bass artist George Levings, aka Comics, has accused has been accused sorry, of defrauding dozens of people who signed up to his music production workshop. The allegations against Levings, who has represented Comics um, or solo since Conrad Whittle and Greg Brewer shithead left the group in 2004 and 2011 respectively, were first publicized back in June. A thread appeared on drum and bass forum Dogs on Acid, accusing him of owing more than nine thousand dollars, sorry pounds, in unfulfilled lessons to twenty five to. 110 students enrolled in the bear music workshop the amount owed is 9229 for 237 hours the post read before providing a chart breakdown of how much was owed to each individual there may be more people that have been owed also money and lessons who have simply given up any hope of receiving lessons or refund i guess on paper these things sound quite labor intensive to sit down with people to go through production workshops and shit but again i have no sympathy for people that do this stuff it's like people that you know on fucking vintage or depop who don't want to send their shit on time if you have your stuff listed don't then start sending me excuses in the dms about your work about your cat and your dog and your mom i don't give a fucking fuck if you have stuff available for sale be available to send it when i fucking pay same goes for these production classes if you put production classes and workshops and mentorships available online make time in your day to fulfill those promises because people are paying you and most likely that money has probably been withdrawn and has been spent on fucking cat eight balls pints of beer you know replica fucking jerseys of your favorite of your favorite team and fucking you know un you know unlimited amount of fucking dinners at fucking weatherspoons that's what he's probably done so if that's the case go back and help these kids out because this is fucking horrendous it says Leving who's responsible for a string of acclaimed releases um, on labels such as Metalheads, Exit Records, and Shogun Audio, continually left um, let students down by simply not showing up to book the lessons. <laughs> You're booking the lesson with him from four till five, and he just doesn't show up on the Zoom. What a fucking cunt! Um, the post continued he still is taking on students and accepting payments for lessons and still failing to deliver on lessons and refunds again if you're a student that's still paying him and we're hoping that he turns up to yours and even though he hasn't turned to everybody else's you're a fucking idiot take the hint he's a scammer he's not going to give you anything right now so please wait until everybody gets their fucking money then go uh, before long scores of dogs on acid users came forward 
with their own stories of being scammed by levings a thread now has 90 plus pages of comments there i had three out of 10 lessons books wrote a user called the this hasn't come lightly um a lot of people feel absolutely ripped off some have had issues had no lessons at all even a bit of honesty would have helped but we've been all fed false promises exactly and usually that's all that works that's mostly that works with people I've noticed it with my fucking very small, minuscule Patreon. If you just explain to people, hey, I've had some delays, I've been a bit busy, but I'm going to get your stuff out to you at this time. I've released whatever I was meant to promise at this time. People are usually understanding, but just going out of your way to not communicate with people, ghosting them, leaving them on red will definitely boil the piss of people, especially if they paid their fucking hard earned money to have you sit down with them and give them lessons. It's already a bit of a fucking ruse anyway. I don't believe in any of that shit. I think all the stuff you need to learn how to produce to learn how to mix to learn how to master create fucking beats create fucking melodies write whatever it's all available on youtube for free if you can't surmise and figure out what to do from there on your own then you have no hope to be honest i don't think those mentorship programs do anything they're a fucking waste of money don't spend your money go on youtube it's all available for free but if you can't do that and you want some direct mentorship a bit of pointers then these motherfuckers owe it to themselves and to you to give to give you the time and day because they know you could just get on on social media and get it for free the fact that you're not is because you're choosing not to and you're going away to pay them the money so they should respect that but if you do pay for it you know you're kind of putting yourself up to be scammed because these things shouldn't be paid for like you shouldn't be paying for anybody to teach how to dj there's plenty of free videos out there for you to learn from and if you can't figure it out from there you probably shouldn't be djing let's be fair um, another user called whatever said they paid 800 pounds up front and only received two hour two one two hour lessons people are get paying that much money to learn how to produce it's fucking crazy then george didn't show up twice without notifying or replying to afterwards so i asked for a refund um this was january 7th since then i've been chasing him for my money but still haven't seen my 720 back fucking hell man the post alleges that the reasons Levings gave missing bookings range from train strikes to crashing his bike and issues with the online calendar software. Through to depression and the death of a family member splitting up his partner. Of course, mental health. Of course, use the fucking virtue signaling mental health nonsense. Of course, of course. People love to fucking band that around because, you know, you don't want to be the fucking freak and the callous cunt to say like that. It's not true because anybody it's like saying you've got back pain right and um, you could just make it up to make yourself sound like you know you've got a reason to kind of get out of things but most people who have been clinically diagnosed with depression aren't going around broadcasting it every moment of every day but the ones who want to use it as a fucking um you know as a protection shield against criticism are the ones that are really deplorable if you actually have any sort of mental health issues most of the time you're actually dealing with those things in private you're not fucking going out of your way to you know um to, to seek pity from people on social media it's anguishing it's tormenting it's cutting you up it's destroying your life it's hurting your professional life it's really doing untold amount of damage to you and i'm really hoping that you kind of get over it but the ones that don't and use it just to fucking scam you know you know naive um gullible um students who are trying to fucking figure it out you're scum of the earth i'm out for blood one user says i'm just out to stop this happening more people um there are people i've spoken to who've left the drum and bass scene because of this again you know you're probably never gonna make it anyway um if you're leaving because of that to be honest um you know again it's not it's a bad thing but you shouldn't let these one occasions completely dissuade you from trying to make it in a scene that you love and care about to be fair according to levens um the scamming has been going on for more than two for more than four years he accused levens um of using his reputation as a comics to exploit people there are a lot of young people who massively looked up to him he's then totally ripped them off exactly ra spoke to leavings and six others who signed up to the bear music program they all say that leavings failed to provide music production lessons they paid for false promises lies excuses and unexpected behavior has uh, was now daniel napar characterizing his experience he believes that leavings acted maliciously there are far too many primary school excuses for it is to be genuine he knows what he's doing <laughs> primary school exactly i crashed my bike my dog ate my fucking travel card like what another student who was asked to remain anonymous said that levings um became abusive towards them when they requested refund for unfulfilled classes that's because you spent they spent it mate that has been spent on cat eight balls 
um, maybe a new fucking Fender for his car, whatever nonsense these guys buy, for sure. Um, maybe some more music equipment. It's not there. The money is not there. He doesn't have it. He's spent already. They said that this knocked their confidence as a producer and negatively impacted their mental health. In, open, in an email seen by RA between Levins and an anonymous student, Levin suggested that the student was suffering from debilitating paranoia and lost grip of reality and should seek professional help. George essentially abused me to the point that I no longer think I'm trying to build a career as even a reality. <laughs> when you when you pull the curtain back on in the industry, it's full of some right cunts in it. These guys should be looking after people. They should be mentoring them in every way possible for free. Most of these people, right? They should go out of their way to mentor these few kids who are looked up to them, who in their own way will somehow add to their longevity of this person's legend, right? They're going to somehow contribute to how well this guy's looked at, you know, in the future to come, because they're going to be students of his that are going to say, hey, I got my start because I did this course with this guy. But instead of being nice, instead of being good to these guys, they are fucking cunts. He continued. I'm supposed, uh, sorry, I supported him as a fan when I was younger, but in reality, um, it feels like he's stripped drum and bass from my soul. I supported him again as a teacher, and now I have to walk away lost mentally and made me feel like I'm shit. My music is shit. Oh, I don't get my money back. Ugh. Okay, now I get why they're being emotional about it. Because, you know, your music is your art. Your music is a part of you. Some people describe music as being a, their children. So imagine you're already seeking validation and confirmation by signing up to this kind of course in the first place. And then this guy doesn't book a session with or doesn't fulfill the session booked with you. Then you start to become super insecure. You know, yeah, I can see why this can go a little bit left for people. Fuck. Um, they continued. I just want to get my money back. My mental health has, has to be repaired. I barely listen to music anymore, let alone drum and bass. Um, and again, I don't mind also, even if they're just turning it on just to get their money back and kind of pull away the harsh strings, whatever you have to do, do it. Possibly the most egregious allegation aimed at Levins comes from Nick Sherman a US artist who makes music as generic meds. After being owed £400 in unpaid lessons for over a year, Sherman decided to post his experience on bare music on social media. In private measures seen by Levings, responded swiftly and angrily, dismissing Sherman as a psychotic and claiming that his post made him look like he needs a permanent care. Why does he keep calling people mentally ill when he uses mental health as an excuse for his dickheadness? Isn't that a bit cuntish of him? Hmm. And describing um, him as a creature from the under bridge, uh, creature from under the bridge. Imagine talking to your students that look up to you, that you're a fucking prick, innit? This guy is a fucking bozo. Sherman, who suffers from multiple sclerosis, paid <laughs> even worse. What a fucking prick. Paid for the course with what was left of his disability benefits. I initially planning to give it to my partner who's been holding things together since my diagnosis. But she said, no, use it to some lesson so you can follow your music dream. Or, or Oh my God. This guy is a piece of shit, bro. Scamming the vulnerable and then insulting them online via the DMs and <laughs> God almighty. He eventually received a refund, but the ordeal had a lasting effect on him. I got my money back, but the situation continued to bother me. I stopped making music and started asking myself, has it has this happened because my music sucks so much? It, it's just not the second person to say this, by the way. It affected the shit out of me. I still wake up every day with some level of anxiety. Like Levin, Sherman believes Levin's leverage his reputation as an artist to further deceive students. It kind of sucks. Um, what I said was initially discounted just because he's a big artist. He still hasn't, um, he still, it's, it wasn't until more people came forward, sorry, these allegations started to get taken seriously. Fuck. Delegations of foul play extended beyond Bear Music Workshop. Polish promoter Marcin Kluger said um, he was fully scanned by Lewings um, after booking him to play at his party called Nonce. Hmm. Is that what I think it is? Nonce Drami. Or is that Nonce? Nusi. Or I'm, or I'm probably not saying it right. It's N-O-C-N-E. I'm saying it nonce, but it probably is pronounced noxine or nokine. Nokine drama in, in war, ca war claw back in June. George texts me that he's... <laughs> Honestly, this George guy is a fucking prick. Honestly, the kind of person that you'd want to drive your fucking electric scooter into if you saw him on the fucking streets fucking hell george texts me that his niece dropped his macbook in the bath and that he was unable to provide music production lessons to his customers then he asks me if i could transfer his booking fee earlier than we'd arranged you don't get to do that to me you don't you don't get to ask for money 
after making up an excuse why you can't do something for me go and fuck yourself Kluger obliged again electronic music scene is full of fucking people that just love to get you know scammed um or for lack of a better term cucked why would you do that why would you do this Kluger Kluger obliged but on the day of the performance he received a phone call from Levin showing that he'd missed his flight Kluger then booked him a new flight only for Levin to call again saying Vluing employees didn't let me through the gate because of his luggage was too big Levin's never made it to Warclaw and despite numerous requests he's yet to return his booking fee to Nunchi Drama 100% sure that he won't get our money back so I wanted to warn other promoters who might fall for this scam Will Haunted, who's never received lessons they paid Levings for, hopes that this saga won't tarnish reputation of other production tutors operating in drama based sphere. It should, mate. No one should be paying for lessons on production. I'm sorry. Especially drama based music. It's fucking formulaic. I'm sorry. It's formulaic as fuck. If you can't figure out how to make drum and bass through fucking YouTube tutorials for free, you should you have no business making music. My personal opinion. Just get over your fear and fucking learn directly. Just you know, scour the web, get to some clips, save them on your fucking playlist, and go through those things. Sit down for a couple of hours every day, produce, 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 and you'll get it. You don't need to fucking send these guys money. You're just wasting money, essentially. For validation, for what? They're not gonna sign you. Yeah, you know I mean it's a pointless. Um, I've had an amazing experience with these guys. They deserve all the recognition they get, said Horton. True teachers who care about the newcomers. This is my first experience with a bad teacher. I'm truly fortunate to have some amazing ones. And if they do, they will probably won't charge you as much as he's charging. It might be a nominal fee or it'll be free. It won't be fucking 800 pounds and shit. In light of the situation, the drama based met mentorship program, DMB Academy, has especially helped anyone who's allegedly been scammed. We're offering our DMB Foundations program a comprehensive. <laughs> so if you got scammed, they're offering you another course. Get fucked. I'm sorry. No way. They, that said, it's about time George got exposed. Established people in the scene pulled their finger out about this. It's not. It's not up to the people in the scene to do anything about this, right? To be honest, it's not their responsibility. They didn't scam you, but I do get their frustration with seeing people in the scene just not say anything. But again, seeing people have the backbone of fucking chicken drumsticks, right? They have none, zero, or they have the backbone of fucking boneless chicken wings. They don't have any. So to expect them to step out and say anything is never going to happen, especially when it's a peer, um, because most likely they will probably end up doing the scam later on in their life when shit starts to slow down. Um, but yeah, horrendous. Don't pay for courses. Don't pay for anything online concerning dance music. Figure it out online. There's many free resources out there, free resources, sorry, out there for you to dig into. Don't pay for it or you're just putting yourself up for being scammed, in my personal opinion. But again, what do I know? What do I know? moving on let's go to this one so um i saw this post courtesy of fucking this user called aviator called mr unloved ones and it made me really happy it's the following post here it says the shape of the new jordan 4s going forward will be that of the sbaj4s it was reconstructed to match the original 1989 model to provide an improved fit Yes, you will definitely tell once you get the reimagined Jordan 4s. Again, biggest difference between these and the rest of the 4s going forward is the addition of the air unit um, back. Is the air unit back in the forefoot? Oh, wow. The SB's 4s didn't have any on the front. Amazing. So there'll be an S, there'll be an air unit here in the forefront. That's fucking cool. I don't remember that being a thing, to be fair. I know there's an airbag on the hill that's obviously visible with the airbag window here, but I never knew originally Jordan 4s had an airbag in the forefront. I never knew that. Is that what it said, right? This is said, okay, cool. But anyway, the, the thing I wanted to mention about this is that the shape of the Jordan 4s on the SB versions are legitimately maybe my favorite I've seen so far. They legitimately are up there with my favorite shape of a shoe I've seen. And the reason why is because they have this front bit, which I talk about often because I'm been a sneakerhead long enough to know there was a period in time when nike had this tendency to retro shoes and always had this weird banana kind of front thing going on here so they would get the fucking overall paneling okay of the shoe but the shape would just be off because it bent up and the excuse that a lot of nike people had behind the scenes was that the tooling the original tooling to make it from scratch was really expensive my opinion i don't buy it because you know sneaker industry is a multi-billion dollar industry um sneakerheads basically dominate i think the majority of people who buy shoes on a fucking daily weekly whatever basis anyway and if you're going to charge people 150 plus for fucking jordans at least at least you can do is make them to spec 
make them to spec of the shoes that we all fell in love with originally on those adverts on those initial ticket high field sketches and make them to spec of the original that's all we ask and it's not hard to do even if you have to remake the tooling fucking jerry lorenzo was able to get his own last and tooling to use when he made his fucking nikes back in the day when he was linked up with with nike so why can't they do it why are they incapable of doing it? Because they don't want to spend any money. They'd rather just keep churning out the same retros using the same last, the same molds as before because they don't have to spend any more money in reshaping them and remaking them. But I like the fact that they decided to absorb the Jordan 4 into the Nike SB um, lineup. They obviously did a lot of wear testing with the SBs, um, so much so that the wear testing led them to, you know, basically being the first Jordan 4s I've ever seen with a suede kind of mudguard, you know, and leather. Usually you do see some with Nubuck and suede and shit, but you never really see the combo of suede and leather. And that obviously is to accommodate skateboarders who obviously are going to rub the side of their shoe against the grip tape when you're doing your tricks, ollieing and flip tricks and whatever it may be. And there's other little bits of improvements. Also, I've heard on the heel that adds to allowed to allow your your foot to kind of sit in the shoe a little bit more and obviously there's the addition of that airbag on the front and obviously as well that fucking sb insole that we all know and love and i've clearly loved it and i haven't really got a pair yet i'm not really sure why i've not really been on to getting these yet but they're definitely one of my favorite shoes that i've seen in yesteryears and it's definitely encouraging to see that nike are kind of listening to fans and putting out shit that we all kind of want to see going forward and it's also encouraging that this is going to be the shape and model we're going to see going forward for the fucking reimagined jordan fours that i've been fucking on and on and on about so i can't wait to see those when they eventually do come out um when they eventually do see those kind of being pushed out by people online and stuff because those shoes look like one of my favorites i'm going to be able to wear in recent time i'll probably might end up having to double up on those bad boys when they do eventually drop because they look absolutely incredible and i can't wait to see them when they do eventually drop i do remember seeing actually some actual real life pictures of them actually let me see if i can find those um of the jordan fours reimagined the actual um pictures when they're actually going to be available let me see if i can find them anybody's actually put them out yet i saw one in a the box there we go yeah i saw it in a box here it is so this is courtesy of who hype beast and allegedly this is the first look of what they're actually going to look like so that model i showed you before that had a bit of a tumbled lever effect it doesn't really show up as much on these maybe it's the pictures on themselves i don't be too sure but on this particular product image that we have here of the shoe that's available next february you know the hype on these is crazy but they're available next february and you can already see the improvement on the toe right they don't bend up as much they're way more flat they look a little bit more similar to the sbs in terms of the forefoot here on the front and the lever is a lot more softer it looks it kind of looks like the lever if you're not looking at the picture it kind of looks like you know when you put some food lever on your shoe that kind of like balm you can put on leather shoes to kind of give it a bit of a bit of a shield and obviously to kind of really moisten up the lever on your uppers of your shoes it kind of feels like that um but i do like the tumbled lever effect on there it looks really cool and then yeah that's the shape of them look at that they look fucking beautiful man i think honestly the jordan 4 bread might be one of the best shoe colorways and models of all time it probably is up there with the nike info no air max 90 infrareds in terms of a quintessential you know it's like the chicago or black toe no it's like the chicago bulls colorway of the fucking jordan one um the black cement freeze on the jordan freeze um the breads on the jordan fours the infrareds on the jordan sixes and shit or sevens i think it is with the airbag um the mx90 infrareds 90s like mx ones in different colorways right there's a usually a quintessential colorway for each model and i think this is the one i also like the is it tubular laces oh no it's flat laces i thought they're tubular laces but they look really cool and then you've also got the nike air tag on the back the one that we all want to see there so these look fucking crazy good can't wait to see when they eventually drop definitely one you're gonna have to double up on to be honest if you're a sneakerhead like myself you're definitely gonna have a few pairs of these collections and the good thing about these shoes they go with just about everything but again february release is fucking tough in it february release is fucking tough um i wonder if people are going to be tea bag staining the midsole like they did on the originals right oh no the originals after they died out you got like a cloudy airbag and a tea bag stain thing there i wonder if people will be doing that on theirs um because i think you can do that if you remember back in the day a way to fucking dye the midsole to make it yellowed and to make it look like it's vintage is to basically strip this paint away with um i think it's like acetone i think it is and then it basically peels away some of the 
um, paint um, on the polyurethane sort of like midsole thing and it exposes the kind of you know the raw material whatever that fucking is called I guess it's polyurethane and then essentially that kind of um, over time will kind of yellow and die and shit and it will kind of look a little bit weathered and you end up with this sort of effect that you see here on these original um, Nike Air Max sorry these original Jordans from 1989 from back in the day so maybe people will do that going forward but I can't wait to see these drop when they eventually do because they look absolutely banging they look absolutely banging talking about banging we got these amazing 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 things courtesy of Stussy and Clark Stussy really never missing for me they're never fucking missing and this is another example of them another collaboration that they fucking knocked out of the park this time with Clark's and they've made these incredible wallabies right look how they made them look they've got these fucking um club card fucking motifs on the front of them that essentially make them look like um loafers like the loafers that everybody's wearing nowadays um the penny loafers i have a couple of them from gh bass and stuff but essentially everyone's got a pair of these loafers with these kind of you know different designs on the forefoot and shit and they've done the same thing with a pair of wallabies so they've taken a wallaby and essentially subverted what they look like especially with these black laces and how the pictures look right they kind of look like loafers but they're not they're just basically wallabies with black laces but they've got these um, um i think that's a clubs right uh, mark i don't know what the other ones are called in terms of you know hearts i guess aces and diamonds on the forefoot and they look like they've been embroidered so they've really done incredibly well so it's not even screen printed and they made to look goofy but they look fucking incredible and obviously the models made them look really good because the styling pictures of Susie are always incredible and again big up the stylist here called who's it um Jarrell Roberts and Francis Puluma on the photography and the cast and the model is to me but yeah these look fucking great let's read a bit of it here on the blurb it says Susie has collaborated with Clark's original on a version of the iconic Wallaby silhouette done in black suede with a classic pebble crepe design the shoe features a contrast in stitching embroidery and four original french suits clubs diamonds hearts and spades in red and gold stucci clark's originals will be available worldwide in select chapter stores um from friday the 29th so if you're around and you want a pair please do they look incredible i think these are going to look great with some shorts they'll look great with some wide pants they'll look great with whatever pants you wear with your fucking loafers and to be honest these look far more interesting than the loafers that people are wearing nowadays anyway personally i like these way more these look fucking so fucking cool and again great products great product shots great collaborations from Stussy they've ever used to miss really when it comes to sort of stuff and I can't wait to see these in person and again as you can see here with the picture close up you can see the black laces here but I like that in this picture they've kind of you know darkened darkened it up a little bit so you can't see the laces it kind of gives this kind of a loafer type of effect on the front of the shoe it looks fucking cool so big up Stussy can't wait to see more for them going forward Stussy and Clark's collaboration they absolutely knocked it out of the park big up them Next year, we've got this picture courtesy of Salili Bembry, which features an up and coming a new balance that he has in the works. And this is posted on his personal account here. You have the image of him wearing these absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous new balance 19. 06 R's um, in his exclusive colorway. They obviously look really good here. Um, the outfit he's wearing probably isn't the greatest, right? I, I don't know. I'm not really the biggest fan of the stuff that he wears, but again, he's got good personal style because he just wears the stuff that he obviously clearly likes, but it just isn't for me. Um, but he is an amazing person when it comes to putting together footwear, right? We can't deny the slides, the crocs, the, the other bits of New Balance um, sneakers he's done along the way. And I really do like the color combination of these. They kind of remind me a little bit of the of the mad hectic new balance jaunts from back in the day that i used to have i forgot what the number where they were but they do kind of remind me of that similar type of style of a colorway from like the late 90s early 2000s type of thing the you know um like atmos and types of things those type of bright colorways very um very shibuya very harajuku very tokyo feeling in terms of it um actually on the upper you've got this really nice teal you got a combination of orange it looks like there's a bit of burgundy on the midsole and of course you've got these really nice laces too and a contrasting tongue i've always been a fan of this personally it's just a really a thing of mine that i've always liked i've loved the idea of having a different color tongue to the laces so that it contrasts when you have the laces 
kind of tightened and it kind of adds another design element kind of thing on the actual shoe if that makes any sense because you've got all these panels over there all you can obviously add it but i think this is a really cool way to kind of add a bit of an another bit of design um you know elements to your shoe by having a different tongue having a different color for the label and obviously having different fucking laces and i'm sure they will come with other laces or in the box but i think that kind of adds to it um i like the combination of suede here i think this toe box features a little bit of a teal sort of like suede baby blue type of colorway here as you can see it running on the instep there's a nice mesh here on the upper it looks like it looks like a mesh i am not sure what type of mesh it is it's not regular air max mesh i'm used to um it's a bit different more of a sort of like a web type of feel um of course you've got the nice hit of the burgundy on the midsole which is different you know usually i'd prefer it to be clear or white i'm not really too fond of the big color block midsoles personally myself but that looks pretty cool and he's opted for a black on the insole no contrast in colors or any sort of madness which is nice too because if you wear sneakers a lot you know sometimes having lighter color um linings can be a bit of a bugbear where you slip your foot in and out it gets really stained and it's hard to clean but again really nice colorway no ideas when these are going to come out um he hasn't really been replying to people's messages on the dms sorry on in ig that's what people do right you just put your shit up there build up the hype ignore the messages maybe double tap like some comments but then you're obviously hoping that this is going to get people excited um for the things that you're going to be dropping very very soon so big up Salidi Bembry. these look really really good i'm liking the look of these can't wait to see them when they eventually drop no indication here courtesy of hype beast when they do drop but he did preview them when he was out during milan fashion week sorry milan fashion week yeah so big up Salidi Bembry. good to see that he still got a little bit more creativity in his fucking arsenal. He's still fucking pumping out sick colorways and sick designs. And I kind of see more that he produces along the way. So big up Salili. Big up Salili. Next, I want to mention this about Virgil Abloh um, in general and about how much the scene and the industry kind of misses him. There has been a real lack of people, creatives, heads, designers, whoever they are doing what Virgil used to do which was be unapologetically um open about the design process about the seeding process about the marketing about the work that went into all the things that he did from his own collections to his collaborations and there's no more better example than how he essentially single-handedly did the single-handedly did the activation for the entirety of his nike 10 project and beyond he did it all by himself and absolutely smashed it this is courtesy of over under follow them on twitter they've got an amazing account always posting cool interesting things concerning streetwear and sneakers and shit and it puts his picture of Virgil Abloh gifting a pair of Jordan 5 off-whites um, to ASAP Bari back in the day. He's also drawn on a midsole that he used to do, which I copied on my own shoes also. He says here, fuck the ops for young Lord only on the midsole, which looks cool. And it kind of reminds me, he might have been the reason why Jordan 5s came back into prominence, especially as a collaboration shoe. I think everybody didn't mind the Jordan 5 Metallics when they dropped it to Retro, but they were never really seen as a cool collab shoe. Um, they, they're, they're kind of hard to wear and to make right. I think anybody that's worn Jordan 5s would probably attest to it. I think Jordan 2s also fall in that sort of line. Even Jordan 3s, they're very clunky. Um, the sort of like the tongue kind of cuts into your foot and it's not, it doesn't really drop the greatest with jeans you don't want to wear them with skinny jeans sometimes if you have big feet it makes your feet look longer you can't always wear them with flare jeans because you take away the you know the beauty of the high and what it looks like on the, on the collar and stuff but i think virgil did a really good job of essentially bringing jordan fives back into prominence and making them a thing again with this off whites that he fucking produced this is the retail version i'm pretty sure and then there's another pair here too um the cell versions which are the kind of friends and family version and this was the first time i actually saw the shoe itself and i was gagged when i saw these on fucking social media when he posted them the first time they look so sick so it says yeah virgil cutting out the circular holes of the off-white jordan free sales and the sad thing about it is that you don't see anybody doing this anymore this kind of pulling the curtain back of the to the design process showing you what goes into making these collaborations showing you the behind the scenes of the activations parts of it just kind of showing you step by step what he's doing no one does this anymore it's all kind of went back to how it was before he was one of the prominent people to do it and people just like copied him because it was working but now he's gone and people are shy they may be insecure they go back to just you know hiding things and you know talking in codes and shit and leaking things whenever they're ready but you don't see people doing what he was doing here right by the hand 
doing it on his own social media account and just putting it out there it doesn't happen as much anymore and it's a real shame honestly because i feel like we need that nowadays um and this for me as a creative was super inspiring to see somebody doing this type of stuff out there and again on the Jordan 5 a shoe that I generally didn't really give a fuck about and there's some more pictures here again featuring the Jordan 5 sale um which is again a friends and family colorway that I think is available on most fucking resale sites now I think a lot of people probably put those up available on resale sites but again the holes on the upper are really cool they add another element to it the inside outside sort of effect on the upper is great the 23 on the back of the heel like what a beautiful colorway man honestly that exposed um um, icy clear sole on the outsole over time will die and change color so will some of the eyelets and the plastic bits they're like just really expertly done honestly some of the best stuff you're going to see here going forward in terms of see collaborations and again i think i mentioned this before on twitter but i honestly do think it was even more impressive that Virgil was able to do this with Nike because he was never somebody that I would deem to be a sneakerhead. He was obviously always involved in the culture, always, you know, he was kind of there at the beginning, don't get me wrong, but he never purported to be a sneakerhead. So there was way more pressure on him to get this right than anything he'd done because he was given a lot of fucking models to work with. You'd imagine there'd be a lot of duds, but there aren't many duds in that fucking collection. Even the fucking Converses were fucking hard, right? He smashed them in all fucking aspects. And then he went for the other models, like Jordan 5s and Jordan 2s, just to flex his muscles even more and remind people, wild one for real, for real. Like, there really was no other creative like Virgil when he was around, man. Definitely underappreciated during his time. And again, all of this stuff we didn't, we don't really see anymore, right? No one's doing this stuff anymore. No one's showing us these cool behind the scenes pictures of themselves working on the shoes, lace relacing them behind the scenes, all this fucking good shit. And then more information regarding the shoe itself here, courtesy of Over Under. It says main difference on the friends and family V retail pair being the sale colorway of the sole and the shoe featuring a red lining as well. So big up fucking what's his face um big up over and under for providing that information because honestly that has definitely been a really good reminder as to the power of virgil and why he was so important when he was around man honestly one of the best to ever do it r.i.p virgil long live to the goat long live to the goat moving on from that let's talk about some london fashion week stuff or just fashion week stuff in general let's peruse let's peruse let's Peruse. So we've got the first thing to talk about here is what I want to see here, courtesy of Phil O, which is some of the best street style pictures, allegedly, from that from the fucking London shows. Let's see what some of these freaks were wearing while they were out. You got this guy wearing some weird bubble head thing at the Burberry show. Looks absolutely naff. Let's just continue on that one. We don't really care what he's talking about. Let's make sure we pause this side video here. Um, we've got another picture of some dude. I don't know who that is. I guess he's who's that? Is that Kano? That might be Kano actually. Um, Burner boy here, wearing head to toe Burberry. Um, he's got a really big head in it for his body. No, his head is abnormally big. I wonder what size New Era's but Burner boy has because I've got a pretty meaty head and I wear like a seven and five eights. I wonder if he's like an eight or a nine in New Era's because he's got a, he's got a fucking dome in it. Um, anyway, more people here. Oh, that's a Pamela Anderson arriving too. Uh, another fashion person more fashion people um what's her name gabrielle union i think here wearing burberry she looks really good actually in that burberry i'm not gonna lie gabrielle, you know, it's impressive there also skeptic looks really good as well um i'm not sure that person is. she looks pretty cool we got some different people here walking around oh i like the use of greens here i like the colors on this young lady here she's wearing this green lime green overcoat with lime green pants a pink top and black shoes interesting color combination i like this this might be something to kind of save as a color combo thing to be fair let's make sure we print screen that i love the color combinations i'm not gonna lie that looks really fucking cool um oh we got um Mara Lola here as well looking really impressive she always looks good in her own clothes like quintessential designer she looks great in the stuff that she makes so big up her um some guy wearing a teddy head mask thing you got hoing sung min from flipping spurs here wearing some burberry also big up him I got that actor as well. I forgot his name. I'm not sure who this lady is, but she looks terrible. Um, more people here. More cool people walking down the streets. Loads of Burberry. Burberry have sponsored a lot of people, in it, right? They're really the marketing budget for Burberry must be crazy, man. They got St. John wearing Burberry. They flew him all the way from Americas to come and do it. Fucking hell, mate. They're spending some coin, Burberry. Oh, she looks fucking great. I like this whole denim look. That's really nice. 
Um, this outfit from these two looks really good also. I'm not too sure what that effect is on that top, but it looks really great. It's kind of spiked. And it's also got this almost, um, you know, it, looks like, it kind of looks like a vape both of them they kind of have that vape sort of colorway towards them um i like this skirt from this lady as well nice cool hat from this one more burberry bra many many black people from but is this daniel lee's attempt to kind of dissuade people from you know looking back at that story of, allegedly of him calling that person and meeting an n-word because there's so many black people at the fucking shows the pandering is insane big up fucking um what's his face um brian boy for the pandering term but yeah more looks i wonder what that what designer this look is from is that Jordan for something? I don't know who that is. Maybe someone, I'm not too sure. Not too sure who this person is, but the heels look fucking fantastic. Great outfit also. Honestly, do, do you have to be a big loser to go to fashion shows and start screaming at celebrities? Is that cringy loser behavior? Or is that a really good cheat way to get to see celebrities because not many people go to fashion shows anyway? Hmm. I'm going to say it's the first. Um, cool. Uh, more Burberry looks here. Um, you've got M. Honcho here wearing Burberry. Big up him um you've also got i guess what's her name christine prantera i think the person who used to work with the virgil back in the day at off white and shit and new guards group i guess with her husband um more people here oh i like the guy wearing the fucking i like the the, the burberry taupe not gonna lie that looks pretty pretty cool i'd wear that um another lady here wearing the red burberry the color the color the colors on the burberry check are quite nice i'm not gonna lie i don't really mind it too tough um, oh, that's the guy from the um, the gay rom com on Amazon, isn't it? The one about um, the kid that's the son of a the president and the the one that's meant to be Prince Harry or something. They date on some show, so he looks quite great there. I'm not I'm not really liking him tucking his pants into his boots. I fucking hate people do that shit. To be fair, model here looks great. Big up her. Another model, someone wearing combats. More cool people with white hair. Me likey. Not too fond of this one great looks so much burberry in this stuff isn't it did feel when you go see burberry people it's a shame that long sleeve that long sleeve is nice but it's a shame that long sleeve from burberry is fucking 600 pounds and shit you know what i mean it's pointless um we've got whisk kid here and some more burberry who's behind there is that ddg no i thought that was ddg back there <laughs> bro she did, did did daniel lee invite everybody that hangs out in fucking what's that thing called um box park or something in shoreditch to, to this show like what the fuck mate it's like this is like the this is like this feels like a the grm awards or some shit <laughs> sackers here who's this is this um is this asap ferg i don't know who that guy is I, 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 I see the small arms i thought it's asap ferg maybe it's not might be somebody else more cool people at burberry don't know who they are another black person at burberry yo the quota of blacks to whites in burberry must have been crazy bro it's, just, it's the opposite of, of a Phoebe Philo show, right? Phoebe Philo doesn't want any blacks and Daniel Lee wants all the blacks. <laughs> okay, cool, man. All the blacks. Oh, what's his name? Um, What's the DJ's name? Fucking hell. Legendary DJ. I forgot his fucking name in my head. It's escaped me. But he's there. He looks absolutely horrendous though. The jacket is godly. I think this jacket is like six grand or something. It's red. It's got flowers all over it. It's got this amazing um, fur collar on it. It looks fucking beautiful. But it's like six to ten grand. It's fucking crazy. Uh, oh, you got Jamie from Top Boy there looking horrendous. I don't like the outfit. Maybe take off the jacket and just wear the jumpsuit thing. Um, more black people. More black people. God almighty, mate. Daniel Lee really invited everybody from fucking Hackney down to fucking Burberry show. Oh, shit. I don't know what's happening here um cool like the jacket and the bags looks pretty decent what's happening come on load some more pictures for me give me some more stuff to go on okay maybe not it's kind of tapped out on me at number 60 maybe it's a sign that i should flip and stop by now anyway um i'll put the link to all the slideshow so you can see it yourself in the description to see it it's phil o's best reached out photos from spring 2024 shows in london for some reason my computer tapped out at fucking 60 what um, photo number 64 but there's a bunch more that you can see there if you are that way inclined you can see them available on the site and check them out for yourself oh let me scroll back up again there's some more here oh she looks really cute the girl from game of Thrones. she looks really cool here i don't know what she's wearing um but she looks fucking cool she looks really cool that's probably my favorite picture i've seen so far she looks really good 
big up her um i think it's Maisie. i think her name is Maisie or something like that um this lady looks really 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 great too love her style scroll up again here let's zoom out a little bit and see what Guan. let's scroll down not really too fond of this not that keen that what's happening here some cool people outside i don't know what show they're waiting at maybe they thought rick owens is going to show in london um some cool people here another cool person there asap nas coming through oh not really too fond of that look to be honest another cool person here i like the kilt not gonna lie wish my bum would fit into kilts but it is what it is and some more cool people along the way also you know the vibes cool people went to do cool things it's a fashion show not much more to really speak about here um not very really much interesting street style pictures in london i don't really think to be honest i think most of the interesting street style pictures you'll see are usually from paris because paris has the better shows and more of the better people go out there so i'll look to see what the paris stuff is saying when that eventually drops i'll wait for the paris stuff when that eventually does drop so I wanted to talk about some of the commentary that revolves around Phoebe Filer at the moment. Um, this Iman interview has gone viral once again. It's from Sway from, I think, a few years ago, to be completely honest. It's not it's not a recent interview. But for some reason, this interview has gone viral again for this particular clip. Um, Iman basically speaks about why she doesn't buy um, Celine or why she doesn't support Phoebe Philo in general, right? And most of it has to do with the fact that Phoebe has a very particular specification when it comes to having models on her runway. Like she didn't want, even though she was purported to be that the woman for, you know, that a woman that designed for every woman, right, around the world, she clearly only had a very particular type of vision of woman that she wanted to represent on the runway. And it was usually very European, very Caucasian and very slim right but for some reason it resonated with people and i don't know why that is i feel like it maybe is a reflection on how people view stuff in general because i think to myself a lot of the times like why do a lot of women out there seem to be avid followers and you know kind of buyers of fitness influencers who clearly look like they were professional athletes when they were younger maybe they did ballet gymnastics um weightlifting or something and then they also happen to be super cute. So it kind of made it easy to kind of get into modeling. But I wouldn't think that their, you know, nutrition plans or their workouts would actually work for the every girl because they have a really good athletic base. But I always wonder why do regular girls like to follow people? Like that? It really didn't really, it didn't really make sense to me. But again, it's women's business, not my business. And I think the same thing can be said for this. Um, Phoebe Fowler had a very specific image of a woman, even at Chloe, even at Celine. And it was very white, very European, but women all around the world resonated with it because maybe that was a something to kind of aim for, even though it didn't really represent them. And then maybe down the line, towards the end of her time at Celine, she started to get her runway to be a bit more reflective of her fan base because the, her fans were worldwide. It wasn't just white women buying her stuff, it was everybody, which is the only odd thing that I never really liked about designers. Like, I don't mind if a designer only has people on their runway that actually buy their things. But I don't like the idea of just ignoring a huge chunk of your fan base. It happened a lot with Demna in the beginning. When Demna was doing Vetemar, it was incredibly white for some reason. Even at the, at the very beginning of fucking Vetemar, the only people that were fucking wearing it, really, right, that were going out of their way to fucking buy it, were black people and Asian people. You, the only people you see wearing that shit on the daily. I actually saw real life people wearing the fucking metal logo hoodie the massive bomber jacket the reconstructed one you see actual asian kids around even where the area that i live in walking around wearing that stuff when it first dropped so it was kind of insulting to not have us and them represented on the runway when we're clearly the market that's buying them the most and over time them they kind of learned and obviously started to include some models in there to kind of appease and kind of tick some boxes and shit. And now it's something that he kind of does um, going forward, whatever. But the Celine thing is interesting because it clearly was a shift. You clearly saw when she got called out, Phoebe, she definitely did change. Towards the end, you saw a lot more, you know, blacks and Asians and whatever else, non-whites on the runway. But I thought what Iman had to say about it was fucking hilarious. And again, this clip has gone viral on my side of social media. But it's interesting because it also kind of makes me, reminds me of the whole kerfuffle around Daniel Lee over at fucking Patekovaneta when he was there and the alleged things that he said about 
you know us blacks and that didn't really affect anything so i don't really think this will change people's idea or impression on phoebe Fowler, especially with her namesake label about to launch and her return to fashion happening i think in september or something right soon or maybe it's, yeah it's happening this shit it's happening soon in paris fashion week what, what, what i'm talking about so that's happening soon so that show is going to be chocker blocked people are going to be falling over themselves to cover it and most likely she's going to have one of the first models come out be black right just to kind of settle the nerves and get people back on side again so it's not going to do anything but let's hear anyway what the legend um iman has to say about phoebe philo and fucking celine in general let's hear her oops one of the designers was a one of the designers was a, a woman called philo who did celine Every woman, <laughs> black, white, every age that Celine. I know of, coveted Celine bags. Mm -hmm. You know, it was always, you know, waitlist, list, wait, list, mm -hmm. wait list. Those bags. And so Philo said, uh, am I going to be forced to use black? She's never used black models. So she said, am I going to be forced to use black models? I said, Jesus. no. I mean, there's, there's got to be the right black model for you. You know, there can't be no black model that's not, not, not right for you. And... Uh, but just by she saying that, yeah. I said, and I did this I, I, because I've done it, but I never said it, you know, publicly. I said for the action of she saying that she has to have the choice not to use black models. That's why I have never bought a Celine bag. Oh. Mm, wow. She has the right to her runway and I have a right to my pocketbook. Absolutely. Mm. So, you are, and I, so I never owned a Celine bag. Big up fucking Iman. And that's true. And to me, that kind of reminds me a lot of my experience with fucking pilots, which is really pathetic and honestly probably makes me look worse. Makes me look, yeah, probably makes me look worse than whatever they had probably done. But there was a period in time in my life when I jumped on the whole palace wave kind of early because I was plugged into sidewalk forum and I was skating a lot back in the day and I was really a part of the scene skating a lot and all this fucking shit right um you know re-watching kids a million times and old zoo york tapes and shit and going to fucking um events at fucking slam city skates and that was still around and just being a fucking skate rat so I was plugged in a lot so I kind of found out about Paris when it first launched like you know at the moment it kind of launched and I was jumped on it straight away I was like, oh shit, it's our fucking Supreme. It's a European Supreme, it's a European Supreme. Boom, 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 boom. Um, and then I remember buying the first couple of t-shirts they put out, the Chanel one. I bought the Versace Medusa head one, inspired one. I bought one of the early Trifect t-shirts when they used to actually print them on t-shirts that were inside out sort of thing. I bought them on those. And then I remember being plugged in, right? And I remember one day <laughs> when I was working in the 1948 store, one of the guys involved with Palace or one of the founders was there. And I was being kind of a fanboy, wanting to get more information about what was going on and shit. And maybe I should have realized because maybe because we're maybe the similar age. I don't know what it is, but I just got vibed out instantly, right? I kind of said something that, oh yeah, you're going to make hats or something, right? Because I wanted a hat or something and they didn't have hats yet at the time. And then he just like, completely like dismissed me in a way that was super 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 sad like i felt really offended and i felt even more offended because i remember looking at him thinking hold on like you're not even from ends and you have this whole persona and all this aesthetic with your brand where you try and act like you're from ends but you guys are from west or wherever the fuck you're from right um, this ironic wear use of fucking wearing the sovereign and wearing fucking Reeboks and loafers with tracksuit bottoms. I just started immediately thinking to myself, how dare you of all people try and sun me, right? I just, it, it, but it was one of those things. You remember sometimes when you're out and you bump into somebody and you have a bad old, you know, interaction with them and then you wish you said things. I started to think of all these things I wanted to say. Then I thought to myself, settle down. Just vote with your pocket, vote with your wallet. And from that moment on, I never wore Palace again. Never. Even to this day, there is, I saw a new lookbook out at the moment that features this amazing bomber jacket, this amazing, almost Jamiroquai inspired hat that I would obviously wear, this cool belt. Never going to wear it because of that one bad interaction I had with them. And I think more people should do that when it comes to designers and fashion because I feel like, like a lot of these motherfuckers really have an odd way of treating fans and maybe customers which has always interested me this kind of ambivalence disregard 
almost coldness that they have with people who communicate with them in real life when they make these products right because it resonates with you it touches you you want to say something and again maybe i came across rude maybe i didn't come across right maybe i said the wrong words who knows i could be i could be perfectly in the wrong with this and it could be something i'm just made up in my head but from that moment i never wore the brand again and i think i've probably got a couple more of those in my head but i just silently kind of you know my little silent fucking lame protest against it which didn't work because you know they're fucking booming right now right they've got stores all over the fucking place and they're selling stuff by the fucking truckload so clearly my little speech doesn't really matter but i think it's important to vote with your wallet it really is important to only support people that you legitimately connect with that you legitimately like and not support the others that you don't because there are plenty of people out there who would love your business who are doing great work and would probably treat you with respect um or maybe at least indulge you which is probably what all i wanted then right just a little bit of like indulgement and kind of you know to kind of make me feel seen not completely dismiss me and kind of act like i was a shit stain on the bottom of your fucking loafers or some shit absolutely crazy but since that time i've never fucking bought anything for palettes again which is really hard at the time because i remember at the time it might have been around the same time that they sort of like started to blow up. So stuff started to get really good, but I've never been able to look at the stuff the same ever again. And to be honest, it does say, it's probably a little bit more related more to my overall experience in the skate scene in London anyway. You know, it's full of a lot of cunts to be fair, unfortunately. Um, I've never really resonated well with them and there is always a bit of an attitude with them anyway because that's how they police and kind of keep their scene, you know, somewhat pure and whatever it may be. But for me i've just you know i'm not about the licky ass thing i can't be bothered really um and it just never really vibed me the wrong way but when it comes to this stuff with chanel and stuff sorry with um phoebe philo and iman i wonder if this will put more focus and more light again on the whole daniel lee thing because that to me is still really perplexed me how he was almost able to quote unquote get away with it not because i want to cancel people i'm not in that business at all i don't give a fuck like that but more so because there are people online especially black people who love to do the whole online activism shit right and try to counter people from dumb shit they said slip ups the wrong opinion but when you get an actual account from somebody who's black at the time who's black i remember right i think it's that guy um pisano luis pisano on twitter who shared that allegedly daniel lee got fired from bottega because he said some n-word shit um insult against somebody in a meeting or something and he put it out there and you know you'd imagine people would probably rally behind that and be like okay cool we're not fucking fucking with this guy anymore but it didn't happen he kind of just got swept under the rug i even saw some people basically saying don't believe the rumors that probably didn't happen people like really fighting for his love in a weird way which is fucking bizarre and then when it came to the burberry show you saw the entirety of fucking you know black britain right the the trendy people in britain who are smashing it um from our scene essentially on the front row of the shows right you saw all of them there so all of this activism people do online and trying to do all this rah-rah protesting shit when you actually are presented with an opportunity to do so you don't because everyone wants to go to fashion shows everyone wants to be at these shows everyone wants an invite at these coveted front rows you don't want to be left out so in my opinion i think you should just ignore all that shit and just do you because clearly these people don't give a fuck right because when it comes to actually doing something they would rather just attend the shows again big up my guy fucking dwe big up kano two of the biggest and legendary fucking mcs and rappers to come out of east london you know forever dwe probably my favorite mc of all time but it's still pretty crazy to see that after all those rumors that came out no one really did anything it didn't really hurt Daniel Lee in any way shape or form he went to Burberry like nothing happened and he had the whole of cool black Britain out there at his show at Burberry in London Fashion Week and nothing ever happened um but people are making a big stink out of you know Celine saying sorry Phoebe Fowler saying she doesn't want black models she doesn't want to be forced to use them so I don't think anything's actually going to change to be fair um it's going to be the way it is people are still going to queue up to buy Phoebe Fowler when it does eventually drop um people are still buying old Celine now so whatever people say online um trying to be activists trying to basically counter people it's all full of shit it's all selective politicking and you should just ignore it and just do what you do really that's the message of my <laughs> little rant there that's the message of my rant anyway this has been the excellent show episode number 708 i think 
Hope you've had a good time. You've enjoyed what you've had to hear. Um, if it's your first time checking out the show, you know what to do. Make sure you leave me a five star review if you can on all the apps that you use to listen to your podcast, whether it's Apple or Spotify, anything else. It has a review option. Please do me a favor and review it. Um, the links to everything I spoke about will be a low, below, sorry, in the description. So you can click and see the stuff that I was referencing and stuff and watch it for yourself and make your own opinion or maybe agree with the things that I said. If you want to, please, that'll be great. There's also my song of the day will be playing underneath my voice now as you hear it and other links regarding myself via social and patreon can be found in the description as well thank you for listening to the show appreciate all of you and i'll see you all again very very soon take care be safe peace